All right, greetings, family. This vlog is about the term the white man science, uh, which is often used in the black conscious community when referring to any scientific concepts which challenge or don't reconcile with any of an individual's personal beliefs or preconceived notions. Um, the term white man science is really used to dismiss the scientific concept being presented so that the individual can continue believing and promoting whatever fallacious idea they hold near and dear to their heart. And they're usually being hypocritical because all you have to do is look at that person's life and you find a multitude of examples where they have accepted and willingly participated in things created by the white man. From clothes to shoes to government to language to entertainment to technology, cars, houses, cell phones, computers, software, etc. There is a multitude of examples where you'll see members of the black conscious community on one hand rejecting something, say, I don't want to do that because that's the white man's. And then the rest of their life is inundated by things created by white people. Like I, I have an old video on my YouTube channel called Do You Really Believe He's the Devil? Actions Speak Louder Than Words. And the whole purpose of that video is to point out the contradiction that people have when they use the white man as a reason not to do something. When you, their whole life is inundated with examples of them participating in things created by white people. But when people do bring up, oh, uh, I don't want to accept that because that's the white man's this or the white man's that, you know, what they're getting at is that for People of African descent living in this Western civilization, we do have real and legitimate issues and complaints about how we're treated in white society. Right. Those those issues are, are true and real and legitimate. But at the same time, using the white man created it as an excuse not to participate in it or not to learn it or not to do it is hypocritical when you juxtapose that to the plethora of examples in your life where you have willingly participated in things created by white people. Over the years, I've heard attempts to rebut the white man science excuse by saying, well, there's no such thing as white man science. There's no such thing as black man science. There's no such thing as African science. There's just science. While I do agree that the white man science excuse for not accepting scientific information is problematic and needs to be refuted. I disagree with the position that there's no such thing as white man science, black man science, European science or African science. So I would like to offer an argument for why I say that there is such a thing as white man science, black man science and African science. But I also would like to offer what I give as a refutation when people come with the excuse, well, I don't have to accept that, believe that or learn that because that's the white man's science. So first, we have to comprehend the interplay between science, engineering and technology. Right. Science is the systematic knowledge of the natural world gained through observation and experimentation. Engineering is the application of scientific knowledge to create things. And technology can refer to tools and machines, but it can also refer to techniques, skills, methods, and processes used to accomplish some objective. To say it in one sentence, engineering is applied science and technology is the product of science and engineering. New technology leads to new science, which leads to new engineering, which leads to new technology, and the cycle continues. There is a Volkswagen commercial that ends with the tagline, the power of German engineering. So we acknowledge that there is such a thing as German engineering or European engineering or white man's engineering. One of the reasons why Europe and the Middle East were able to colonize and enslave Africa was because of their technology. So we acknowledge that there is a such thing as European technology or the white man's technology. So comprehending the interplay between science, engineering and technology how can someone say on one hand that there is such a thing as white man's engineering, there is such a thing as white man's technology, but there is no such a thing as white man's science? Of course there's such a thing as white man's science. New technology leads to new science, which leads to new engineering, which leads to new technology, and the cycle continues. From the telescope to the microscope to the Large Hadron Collider. All of these were forms of technology that gave rise to new scientific discoveries. Historically, 
If Europe developed technology that no one else developed, then that means that they would have also discovered scientific principles that no one else had yet discovered. So, if there is such a thing as the white man's technology, then there is also such a thing as the white man's science. And just like there is the white man's science and the white man's technology, there is also black man's science and black man's technology or African science and African technology. Let us recall that technology is not just tools and machines, but it also refers to techniques, skills, processes, and methods. The technology or method that is the foundation and underpins all science is the scientific method, which is an African invention or an African technology. The book, The Science of Sciences and the Science in Sciences that I wrote discusses the African origin of the scientific method. When we study the history of the scientific method, we find the earliest evidence of the scientific method appears in an ancient medical textbook from Kemet, dating to around 1600 BC, called the Edwin Smith Medical Papyrus. The papyrus contains the procedures of examination, diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis, which parallels the procedures of the scientific method of observation, hypothesis, experiment, and conclusion. And based on the archaic grammar, terminology, form, and commentary in this ancient Egyptian medical papyrus, it is believed that the papyrus was copied from an older manuscript written by Imhotep, the African scientist and engineer who lived around 2700 BC. So, the scientific method, the technology that is the foundation of all science, is an African technology developed by African engineers. Again, if there is such a thing as African technology and African engineering, then there also is such a thing as African science. And African science is the science of sciences, which serves as the foundation which underpins all science. So all science has its roots and origins within African science. So black people, we cannot reject science and say, well, that's the white man's science when it was our science, it was our technology that was the foundation, the foundation of all science, including white man's science. The juxtaposition of these concepts of the white man's science versus the black man's science is studied in a field called ethnoscience, which studies how different cultures of people develop with different forms of knowledge and beliefs and focuses on the historical contributions different cultures of people have made to science. Within the field of ethnoscience, the juxtaposition of white man science versus black man science usually falls under the broader heading of Western science versus traditional indigenous knowledge. Again, the word science means knowledge, so this heading could also be labeled Western science versus traditional indigenous science. Another subheading which falls under this topic is Western medicine versus Eastern medicine, like uh, Chinese medicine or traditional medicine and traditional healers, which goes into the topic of Sangoma, Ngoma, Voodoo, and the different traditional healing practices and modalities used throughout the African continent. But when we compare and contrast Western science versus traditional indigenous science, we find that both have similarities and differences. The similarities between the two systems are concepts that are universally regarded and agreed upon, which make for good science. For example, the importance of truthfulness, empirical observations, correct methodology and verification. The differences between Western science and traditional indigenous science are things like in traditional indigenous science, there is a holistic worldview where science, spirituality and society are interconnected as one. Whereas in Western science, there's a separation between that which is scientific and that which is spiritual, a separation between secular science and spirituality and religion. Another big difference between Western science versus traditional indigenous science is the use of a written tradition versus an oral tradition and math versus myth. Western science likes to use math as the method to encode scientific concepts into abstractions through a written tradition. Traditional indigenous science uses myth as the method to encode scientific concepts into abstractions through an oral tradition. In the book Stolen Legacy by George G.M. James, it states, It was the method of the Egyptians to conceal the truth by use of myths as a primitive scientific method. One of the points I make in the book Supreme Mathematic African Math Magic is that the word myth and the word math both come from Greek words meaning thought. Both math and myth 
involve the process of extracting the underlying essence of a concept and generalizing it into a symbolic abstraction. For example, in algebra, letters do not have to be used to represent the unknown. It can be represented by any abstraction. I did a few videos on my YouTube channel a few years ago called Mathology Mathematics, which discussed the similarities between myth and math. Since mathematics would fall under the category of technology as technique, skills, methods, and processes used to accomplish an objective, then just like there is white man's technology, there is also white man's mathematics and black man's mathematics. Just like there is ethnoscience, there is also a field called ethnomathematics, which studies the relationship between mathematics and culture, and also studies the different methods of mathematics which are practiced among different identifiable culture groups. Within ethnomathematics, you find discussions about the different methods used within Vedic math, Indian math, Chinese mathematics, Ethiopian mathematics, and ancient Egyptian mathematics. However, myth is the African math or African technology most commonly used to encode African science abstractions. So one of the reasons why there is a push for cultural diversity in the STEM fields of science, technology, engineering, and math is because scientifically, we recognize and acknowledge that different types of people, different cultures of people, people of different backgrounds and different genders and different races all have different worldviews. And these different worldviews contribute different perspectives, which in turn can produce different scientific insights and discoveries. In the modern realm of academic and scholastic science, Scientists publish and share their findings with the world. In the context of this modern globally shared form of science, I do understand why someone would say that there is no such thing as the white man's science or the black man's science. There's just science because in this modern uh, globally shared academic form of science, all the scientific information is shared globally. But historically, this global form of sharing scientific information did not exist. So science was localized to particular cultures. And even in our modern time, outside of the academic arena where scientific findings are shared globally, there still exists top secret governmental, clandestine and private scientific organizations with R&D research and development departments who do not share their findings with the world and they keep them secret. They keep their scientific findings secret to leverage those findings to the benefit of their own group. This is why patents, trade secrets, and proprietary information exist. And once they gain that patent, once they gain that stamp that uh, whatever new scientific finding is indeed theirs to exploit, then at that point they may share um, their research with the world. But that's just to say that all scientific information, all scientific discoveries are not shared within the global academic arena of uh, globally shared scientific information, but the overwhelming majority of scientific uh, information and scientific findings is shared globally as of today. And as of today, all races of people on this planet have contributed to the body of knowledge that is science. However, again, since the scientific method is the technology which is the foundation of all science and was an African technology developed by African engineers, then African science is the foundation of all science. So black people, embrace it. It's yours. For pan-Africanists, people who promote African-centered education or people who promote the idea that black people should not worship white gods and white deities, then there is a great work that must be done in the STEM fields because when white people made their contributions to the body of knowledge that is science, they put their mythology within the science, right? So you might be a black person who considers yourself conscious and you have stopped worshiping white Jesus, but you can't name the planets in the solar system without calling on white gods, right? Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, even Pluto, which is not a planet. All of those are the names of European deities. You can't name the days of the week without calling on white deities. Wednesday, Thursday, that's older than Thor. You can't refer to natural phenomena like thunder without calling on white deities. The word thunder means Thor's den. So you may have stopped worshiping white Jesus, but there are a whole, there's a whole pantheon of white deities that you worship when you utilize scientific terminology. You can't name elements on the periodic table without calling on white deities. One, hydrogen. Two, helium. 34, selenium. 41, niobium. 
61 Promethium, 73 Tantalum, 80 Mercury, 90 Thorium, 92 Uranium, 93 Neptunium, 94 Plutonium. Mercury, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, not only are they planets, they're also on the periodic table. And those are just the, the um, those are just examples named after white deities. There, there's a whole host of other scientific concepts named after white people. So if you're saying, OK, well, we shouldn't be calling on dead white people, white, white people's ancestors, etc. OK, but when you get into the realm of science, there's a whole host of things named after dead white people. So now what are you going to do? Are you going to are you going to call on those dead white people in making reference to those scientific concepts? Or should we as conscious black people create our own terminology using our own mythology and our own symbols to identify those scientific concepts? That's what I, that, that's the great work. That's the whole, one of the whole primary purposes of the books that I've written. Right. Like when you move into the realm of um, electrical engineering, you can't make reference to units of measurements like volt, amp and ohm without calling on the names of dead white men. So as a pan-African, as an African centered educator, we have to come up with new terminology and new symbology in order to represent those things. Anytime you use the words thesis, theory, theorem, chronology, archaeology, psyche, psychology or astro anything. You're calling on the name of white gods. Go see my old YouTube video called The Top Ten Gods Worshipped by Atheists and Scientists. White people have put their mythology, white people have put their mythology, their deities and their symbols into scientific concepts. But when we use our African mythology and our African symbols in science, we get criticized by our own people. It's crazy. When white society decided to name the planet Mercury, Mercury, did they say well, there is no historical significance in the mythology of the god Mercury, which makes reference to the planet. So we really shouldn't name that planet Mercury. Did they do that or did they say, OK, well, that's the fastest planet moving around the sun. Mercury was supposed to be able to move fast because he was the messenger of the deity. So let's call that planet Mercury. They found a loose association, a loose connection between their mythology and this new scientific discovery. And they named it after their mythology. But when we as African people do it, we get other African people criticizing us, saying, well, where, well, is there a historical significance within the mythology to justify the come on, man? Come on. What happens when you say there's no such thing as white man science? There's no such thing as black man science. There's just science. What happens when you have that idea? Then you go and you sit in your different science classrooms and then they start teaching you with terminology from their white European mythology, their white European history. And you're supposed to be like, well, I don't see it. I don't see color. I don't see it. It doesn't exist. But yet they're still imposing the whole white supremacist ideas that they have through science. You may have stopped worshiping white Jesus, but you will still be worshiping white gods and white deities and dead white people in the scientific concepts that you hold near and dear. That's why we have to use our own symbology, use our own mythology. You know, when you uh, look at the Black Panther movie, although that is a fictional setting, it's an example of a society that developed their own science, utilizing their own symbols, right, to express the scientific findings that they were able to produce. You know, we should be able to we should be able to refer to natural phenomena and scientific concepts without having to call on deities from European mythology. And in developing our own system, we should be able to translate, you know, OK, well, we, we call the we call these phenomena by these set of terms and by the and utilize this set of symbols. And they use those set of terms and those set of symbols like right? there should be a method of translation. Right. But we should be able, we should have our own unique set of symbols and terminology that makes reference to our history and mythology in order to uh, describe scientific phenomena. A good example um, is a paper written by this brother, Sylvester James Gates, from the Department of Physics at the University of Maryland where he used a Dink Ross symbols to represent supersymmetric concepts in particle physics. Right. So. I'll close with this. African science is the foundation of all science. So black people embrace all science because it's yours.
peace, peace, peace.